hello hey you guys i am back again but today we are going to talk about trauma bonding and healing from um you know the connections that we made through our pain so trauma bonding is really um not very difficult to find out but it's one of those things that we don't even recognize that we're doing because um you know it brings about friends relationships and things like that so with trauma bonding when you um when you meet someone and if the first thing that you guys connect on is your pains and you know things that um upset you like a trauma bond could be um two enemies coming together as well. So um, that is something that you have a connection to that is not necessarily a higher connection. It's just um, two people resonating with their pain um, in regards to another person. It could be um, a situation that happened to you as a child, um, something that you resonate with somebody with. And it can also be um, through a narcissist as well. So with trauma bonding, um, with a narcissist, it um, it's something that they use. It's like a tool to keep you wrapped in. And it's a tool that really um, tries to keep you in their box, in a sense. Because trauma bonds are actually very strong to people who um, have not healed yet. So with trauma bonding with a narcissist, it's a way for them to keep control over you and keep the, um, just keep the energy going of, um, you know, the, the narcissist cycle where you, things are going good, then they go bad, but that, that bond that you guys have or that traumatic, traumatic situation is what ultimately keeps you stuck. So once you heal that, um, you, you'll be able to not only notice the signs, but, um, notice that, um, you know, some of the people around you as well have fallen into this, this trauma bond category. So with trauma bonding, you have to release everyone that you feel, um, is in that bond and you have to, uh, you know, in order to fully heal, you, you have to release. So with recognizing a trauma bond, you have to really evaluate who your first bully is, like I was saying before. Once you find out who your first bully is, you'll be able to um, recognize what you need to heal from, and you'll also recognize who all is fitting into that, that category. So um, one of my first bullies was my uh, mom's boyfriend. He um, told me every day that I wasn't going to be anything, I wasn't going to amount to anything, um, and just continue to harass me. I think I was around nine, nine or ten when I when I first met him. So this was like a consistent thing every day. So I was just um, getting fed all of this information from somebody that I was supposed to uh, respect and um, and uh, you know see as like a father figure. So that in turn made me pick partners who sort of feel the same exact way, if you know what I'm saying, felt like, um, you know, I wasn't this beautiful soul that you see right here. So anyone who is making you feel um, less than and you still feel like a calling to be around them, that in a sense is a trauma bond. Because you haven't healed what happened to you uh, when you were younger, all you do is, hold on, I gotta remove this little muffin top I got going on. <laughs> So all you, uh, all you, all you're gonna do is continue to attract that person over and over and over again. Not only in friendships but relationships as well. So the one thing that you want to do is is notice the signs of a trauma bond. Like I was saying before, if the first thing that you guys bond off of is your pain and um, things that hurt you, that is a trauma bond. That is something that um, that is. Uh, so at a low vibration and it's something that will keep narcissists um you know pulling energy off of you because the bond is so strong a lot of us um resonate so much with the with um people that wronged us because we have yet to heal from it so once you um uh, once you heal and begin the the healing process you notice that a lot of people 
just sort of fall off. They sort of fall back. So when you're when you're recognizing the signs of a trauma bond, the one thing that you have to do is keep it open to everyone. You can't say that um, you know this person is you know your long running friend, so they can't possibly be uh, you can't possibly be trauma bond with them. But again, if, if all you guys do is um, talk on the negative things and talk on uh, negative things about people as well, um, that is a reflection of the pain that you have yet to heal. So with trauma bonding, the most detrimental thing that, you, that happens is that we, we, f we have the illusion that there's a, a real connection, a real genuine connection. But honestly, with trauma bonds, it's honest. It's like a, um, it's like a cycle of abuse, but um, it's hidden within a connection. If you understand what I'm saying, because that connection was made on pain, and that pain was what you know resonates from the past, is something that needs to be healed. And a lot of people trauma bond and come into you know friendships and groups and everything, and. Um, it's not necessarily saying that everyone who uh, who is in a trauma bond situation even recognizes what it is because, you know, you've had friendships since, you know, grade school, you know what I mean? And if you've had a, a connection and you guys always talk about, you know, what's going wrong in life, what, what bad has happened, you know, that is a trauma bond. If you guys never really come up with solutions on how to get out of this situation or how to better your life or how to grow, that is a trauma bond. So when it comes to uh, trauma bonding, it, it comes with physical, sexual, emotional, and um, and just mind manipulation. It's manipulation all around because it's definitely a, a tactic that narcissists use to keep you, like I said, keep you contained and keep you in this uh, this position. So when when a narcissist uh, comes off to you and, you know, the first thing that you speak on is, you know, pain, that's a very clear sign that they're trying to uh, drum up the old emotions, the unhealed emotions, and just stick to you like glue. So when you resonate so much with your pain, it's something that, um, you know, it, it requires work to heal. So it's something that you have to recognize in, in everyone because you might have been in a situation that wasn't necessarily a, um, a traumatic trauma bond situation like, um, like with a narcissist. How are you doing? <laughs> um, it might not be a traumatic situation, but it is still a situation that is cycling around this abuse. So when you are in a situation where you have uh, endured pain and the first thing that you do is express that pain to another and then you know they're like oh me too oh me too and then you form these groups that is a trauma bond so in healing a trauma bond you have to go back to who your first bully was and you have to really um analyze what exactly it is that brought you guys together in the first place. Like I said, if you bond off of your mutual hate from somebody, that is a trauma bond. If you trauma bond for, or if you bond with someone off of, um, you know, things that you've been through in your past, that's a trauma bond. If you bond through things that, um, that, you know, uh, like I said, people that wronged you uh, and things like that, that is a trauma bond itself. So what happens with trauma bonds? When one person heals and the other one doesn't, it gives the illusion that um, that one person is, uh, you know, is not the same because they choose growth instead of staying in the pain. So when you have someone uh, from this point of view who uh, made the connection and everything was... Uh, you know, going the way that it was going, and another person chooses to heal, that person is viewed as like the, the enemy in the way because that connection was so strong and it was so, um, it was literally giving life to the connection. Uh, that person who chose to elevate is like the bad guy in a sense. So, and, and vice versa. So if you're up here on this level and this person doesn't want to come, it's viewed as like, you know, they, they gave up on, 
the friendship in a way. But you have to recognize that you had the friendship down here. So from their level, you are the problem. And from your level, they're the problem, if you understand what I'm saying. So with growth, it comes with releasing. It, it usually happens naturally, but sometimes, you know, um, in order to keep the trauma bond, especially with the narcissist, they will um, pretend to creep up but they'll still be in this like low vibrational state where they're still resonating with their pain. They're still, um, you know, making excuses and things like that. And, um, you know, if, if they pretend, uh, good enough, they can bring you right back down to your situation that you were, uh, that you were trying to get out of. So it's very important to not only recognize the people that you have trauma bonded with, but recognize the signs of a narcissist, someone who is trying to climb the tree in order to bring you back down. So with, uh, with being able to identify the signs of a narcissist, it better helps you gauge if you are in a trauma bond situation. But like I said, sometimes it comes in the form of friendship as well. When you have these connections that you made in these low vibrational states, these low vibrational places, and uh, when, you, when you try to disconnect, you're viewed as the enemy. So with growth, it is a sort of lonely process because you are releasing literally your old life. But it is such a transformative process. It's such a beautiful thing and it's very courageous because a lot of people do not have the strength, don't even have um, the knowledge to move forward from their past. So that's why trauma bonds are so comfortable and so uh, re well received because um, they, this lower energy is what is... Um, you know, ex accepted in a way. So with healing, it really takes a lot of dedication, not only dedication, but it takes patience with yourself because a lot of people don't even realize what, um, what situation they're in until they're from this position, from the outside looking down. So when you are going about this healing and going about um, trying to better your life, it is a lonely process. So when you're here and you're feeling uh, lonely because you've let go of all the trauma bonds, you really have to remember that um, you, you have to learn how to love yourself and sit with yourself. That's really the most important thing because we are in our bodies 24-7, 365. We are never, um, we don't just hop in and out of, you know, our bodies. We're not avatars, okay? So... When, uh, when you sit with yourself and you're able to love yourself, you will realize that um, the connections that you made were in a place where um, you really didn't love yourself at the level, at a high vibrational level, if you understand what I'm saying. So you can be in a trauma bond and be in a low vibrational setting and still, you know, uh, maintain yourself, maintain self-love, but there are levels to it. So as you, as you heal and you heal yourself and you love yourself and you accept, um, accept your pain and still love yourself and accept, uh, and forgive yourself, it comes with a new level of, uh, of self-love and self-respect. So when you're going through this journey, the higher you go, the, uh, the more high vibrational people you call with you. So when you have these, uh, when you're in this high place and you have these low vibrational people, it, it's, to them, it's like you, you, you changed on them and you know, you might be a part of their pain as well now that you decided to grow. So from this high vibrational place, when you are feeling, uh, feeling down and feeling lonely, just remember that you always have yourself. You always have, you know, your your ancestors with you. You are not alone. You're not as alone as you think you are. And because you are going on this journey, you're attracting so much good for yourself. Even though you have attracted good at a low vibrational state and with a low vibrational people, imagine how much good is going to come when you're up here. You know. So that's one thing that I want you guys to keep in mind, especially if you're going on this healing journey, because I know how painful it is, um, you know, digging up your old feelings and um, releasing them and healing them and accepting yourself um, for everything. It's it's a lot of, it's a long process and it's very, um, very detrimental to, uh, to your health if you're not fully, uh, 
fully prepared to release the old, you know? Uh, yeah, the, the acting funny thing is the first thing that they say, especially when you don't want to hang out as much because you start to notice that um, that energy is a reflection of your lower self. And as you try to elevate and heal, they're always going to um, do little things to try and bring you down. So if you're in a narcissist bond with a friendship and, um, you know, they say you're acting funny, or why you don't do this no more, we don't ever see you, da 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 it's like... Um, it's like the, the guilt trip to bring you back down for a little bit. And then, you know, when you start cycling again and you haven't fully healed and you keep resonating, keep resonating with your pain, it continues to cycle you back down. So that is one of those things where I say trauma bonding and friendships can bring you right back down to the position that you were trying to get away from in the first place. So that that's the first thing that they say too that that you're acting funny and that you you know you change so much but anyone who um who doesn't want you to grow is not your friend okay anyone who does not want to see you do better in life and grow is not your friend at all they are just uh placeholders for the real friends that you're about to bring in okay i want y'all to remember that remember that because it's really like um it's really hard when you resonate so deeply with people because you have trauma bonded so strong. And I mean like years together, you know, it takes a lot to take a step back and realize that it wasn't particularly the most healthy relationship to be in. And with the self-acknowledgement and self-acceptance, that's what inches you up into this, um, into this uh, higher self-love and higher uh, consciousness as well. So I am going to just leave you guys with that. I'm going to go into the next video um, right off the bat. And it's going to be um, identifying your first bully, which is going to help you recognize how many trauma bonds you have made since your first bully encounter. So I'm going to leave this video here and I will talk to you guys in a minute. Bye.